So here I am, it's the end of the year, end of the year time, that means I'm recording all my lists in bulk with one single can of Iron Brew, it'll be the same can of Iron Brew that gets me through all four of these lists, but we're starting off with my top 10 favourite wrestlers of 2022, hit the intro. Hello and welcome to FTTR, I am Hugh McQuaid and today we are talking my favourite wrestlers of 2022. It has been one hell of a year, hell of a year for professional wrestling in terms of in-ring, character work, absolutely everything. And yeah, this is my personal subjective list of who I have loved the most throughout this year. Okay, subjective. This is not my objective thoughts and feelings on who I think is the best. I am not qualified enough to determine that, but these are the the wrestlers, the teams, the males, the females, who I've enjoyed most throughout 2022. So we're starting off with some honourable mentions. So just missing out on my top 10 list, and there are some big names in here who did not make the cut. So in terms of honourable mentions, I have Lana Austin, New Progress Women's Champion, fantastic. Sheamus, Absolutely fantastic. Possibly the year of his career. Becky Lynch. Incredible. Incredible work throughout the year. Great heel work. Great women's champion. Lycos Jim. Again, another great tag team who have been fantastic on the British indie scene. I've seen them a lot this year. Love you guys. And now we come to the two big honourable mentions that I've got to mention. Have not made the cut for my list. One of them is probably very controversial. But the first one is Mr. CM Punk. Because... All Out really, really dampened everything that Punk had going forward. And he was in line to be on my top 10. He had the incredible feud with MJF. The Hangman stuff was, you know, interesting, but it didn't quite make the cut, unfortunately. And the biggest, the biggest omission that I just, to be honest, I can't understand how he's getting so many wrestlers of the year. And this is not a slant on the guy because I do like him tremendously. Roman Reigns is not on my top 10 of the year because I think on the whole maybe the character work stuff's been great but the in-ring has been a bit of a letdown the Brock match was not very good okay it just it wasn't very good he's not been around that much it's the war games match I didn't particularly think was like a blow away war games match and other than that the only other match I can remember is with Seth Rollins from the beginning of the year I can't actually remember any other Roman Reigns matches off the top of my head. He had the Logan Paul one. That was really good. Really, really good match there. But I just think overall, I don't don't get it. Don't get that. But shall we get into my top 10, starting with number 10. Coming in at number 10, and you're going to see this a lot, a lot of British indie wrestlers that I've had the pleasure of meeting and, of course, watching live... Coming in is the team Sunshine Machine at number 10. If you have not checked Chuck Mambo and TK Cooper out, you really should. They are an incredible, incredible duo. And they have had incredible match after incredible match and are now enjoying a great run as the Progress Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Go out of your way to watch their stuff on the network because the ladder match from Super Strong Style was awesome utterly mind-blowing it was an incredible incredible match the super smash match that they were in recently i was there live for incredible absolutely incredible stuff some of the best spots you will ever see from these two they are just masters of both psychology and just spot fests they they blend them both so well and i absolutely adored pretty much everything they have done throughout this year so sunshine machine is my number 10 coming in at number nine we have the new aew world champion mjf now mjf would usually be higher on this list i adore the man i think he is an incredible promo and incredible wrestler but there was that gap there was that double or nothing to all out gap where he was absent and some of the stuff surrounding the double or nothing was a bit too risque. Not necessarily risque. What's the word I'm looking for? It didn't quite do it for me. I think that took away from Wardlow's big moment. But there's no denying that MJF has been on top form since winning the championship. And even before that, because the feud with CM Punk is one of the best wrestling feuds 
of all time. The feud with Wardlow was incredible as well. If he just had a few more killer matches in there, MJF could be number one and probably will be number one next year. I think next year is the year of Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And that's why he's number nine. Coming in at number eight, we have the Black Swan, Karen Noir slash Tom Dawkins, another wrestler from the British indie scene that if you've not checked out, I would highly recommend. He's had one of my favourite matches of the year against Ilya Dragunov at Progress uh, 10th anniversary show. Absolutely mind-blowing match. And the story that he's telling right now in Progress Wrestling is fantastic. I don't want to go into too many spoilers, but the Spike Treve storyline is one of the best stories that's been told in professional wrestling across this year. He's incredible in the ring, has a really interesting move set. Check out the I Quit match with Spike Treve from Super Strong Style. That is also fantastic. And he's just incredible at telling these unique storylines. It's such a unique storyline that's going on at the moment with Tom Dawkins. I highly recommend you check it out. It's available on the WWE Network. Go out of your way to watch Car Noir. Coming in at number seven, we have the Ocho Chris Jericho. This has been a banner year for Chris Jericho, an absolute tear he's been on. He has been incredible this year. I even loved, I loved the Wizard stuff at the start of the year. I was pretty okay with the influencer stuff that sort of got swept to the wayside and I'm really on board with the Ocho stuff I'm recording this after Dynamite where he lost <laughs> to a jobber essentially that is just phenomenal storytelling right there and I'm so excited to see where that goes it was a really good match as well his match with Claudio Castagnoli at uh, Final Battle was great and the just the, the Ring of Jericho stuff has been fantastic it's been really good maybe a bit too long obviously the Blackpool Combat Club and the JAS has been a bit bit long. It sort of dominated the year, but there's no denying Chris Jericho is potentially on the run of his career right now. And I, I absolutely love everything Jericho's done this year. So, yeah, Chris Jericho number... I should have had him at eight. Oh, I should have had the Ocho at eight. Fuck it. It's done now. It's done now. It's recorded. Next one. Coming in at number six, we have my rookie of the year, a man I have loved ever since he made his debut on Dynamite, and that is Konosuke Takeshita. This man has had just bangers everywhere he's been. He had two matches in progress, which were fantastic. He's had banger after banger in AEW. His match with Mox, exceptional. His match with Hangman, exceptional. And I've also dived into some of his stuff from DDT as well. Phenomenal. He is a phenomenal professional wrestler. In ring-wise, I think he has a look, he has a style that can really translate over to American audiences. And I've just loved everything that he's done. If AEW do not push this man to the moon, they are doing something wrong. Because he could be a great crossover star from both the Japanese audience and the US audience. He can be that bridge. And I absolutely love everything he's done. Kanosuke Takeshita, hands down rookie of the year for me. Coming in at number five, we have the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair. Now, I have loved pretty much everything Bianca's done this year. Granted, she may be a little bit OP, she keeps beating people, but sometimes that happens, you know? Sometimes that happens until you find that kryptonite edge to beat her. I don't think it's got stale yet. I think Belair is incredibly charismatic. She's had great matches with Becky Lynch. The Women's War Games match, well, a bit of a mess. She was really good in it. And I think she just had she's had good feud. And I think the promise is there as well. Belair Ripley seems like a money match for this year's WrestleMania. And I just I'm so excited to see where Bianca Belair goes. I've just enjoyed everything she's done. I've just enjoyed absolutely everything she's put on. So of course I'm gonna put her on my top ten list. Because she's great. She's great. <laughs> Coming in at number four, we have John Moxley. John Moxley at number four. This could have potentially been the year of Mox. Mox has had a fantastic tear. He's never got to go on his holiday. He's still around. He's still kicking, never getting a break. But he has essentially carried AEW on his back throughout all the 
tribulations and horrible stuff that happened with the elite and CM Punk, he decided to carry this company and he's done a great job. He did a great job as ambassador of like the belt and just having great matches week to week and he's had great feuds. Like I said before, Blackpool Combat Club, JS, may have gone on a bit long but some of the promos he was cutting in that feud before Anarchy in the arena was great. He's had great... Like, the Punk feud was pretty okay. That was hampered by bad booking, but Moxley was great in it, especially the squash match. Oh my God, that was insane. And then the Hangman Page stuff now, fantastic. Mox has been fantastic. He deserves a break. Please, John, take some time off. But you are my number four. We are heading over to the British wrestling scene again for my number three pick. My top three coming in at number three is Spike Trevay. If you have not watched a Spike Trevay promo, you are doing yourself a disservice. They are available to watch and he is incredible. He is one of the best heels in the business today. And it's that pairing of Spike Trevay with Tom Dawkins that has made for one of the best feuds of the year. And his matches as well have been incredible. His match with Dan Maloney was great. His match with Jonathan Gresham, fantastic. His matches with Spike, no, his matches with Car Noir, fantastic. The I Quit match, again, I'll go back to the I Quit match. The I Quit match from Super Strong Style is incredible. Go out of your way to watch that and you'll understand what a dastardly bastard Spike Trevay is as the vulture of pro wrestling. He's got an incredible gimmick and I hope to see him succeed and hopefully get signed by, you know, a WWE in the near future because he is money. He is a license to print money, that man. And that is why Spike Trevay comes in at number three. Coming in at number two, Seth freaking Rollins. Now, I love, 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 love Seth, despite some of the things he says. But I think, this has been the year for Seth. I think he's really clicked with his gimmick, his outrageous looks, and the way he sort of handles himself in the ring. The Cody feud was one of my favourite feuds of the year. I love the matches and I love the storytelling within those matches, particularly in the Hell in a Cell match. Seth in the polka dots, fantastic stuff. And I think from there he's just got he's gone from great thing to great thing you know he's doing this US championship stuff at the moment which helping get Austin Theory over and the Bobby Lashley stuff and I'm really excited to see where Seth goes from here he's just he's carried Raw pretty much on his back throughout the entirety of this year without there being a world title he has been the focus of Raw and he's he's really you know succeeded in doing that and that's why he's number two for me. He's a fantastic, fantastic wrestler. It was the year. He was. He is my top WWE wrestler of 2022. Which can only mean one thing. That number one is not a WWE wrestler. Coming in at number one for me. It could only, it could only have been them. Hint on them. Have you got it yet? Have you got it yet? If I move my head a little bit, do you know who it is? It's it's fucking FTR, isn't it? This is it's been their year. It's absolutely been FTR's year because they've just been incredible. That trilogy of matches with the Briscoes, the match with Aussie Open at um, here in the UK. I'm blanking on the. Royal Quest, fantastic. Even the singles matches, Danielson versus Dax Harwood was amazing. Cash Wheeler versus Dax Harwood was amazing. I remember the Owen Hart Cup and I was pitching for Dax Harwood to win. He didn't, but he should have. And from there, they've just they've just been on a tear. The match with the Young Bucks, fantastic. It's, <laughs> it's FTR's year. Let's be honest, it is FTR's year and they're probably going to get match of the year as well. Not even just from me, just from other outlets and other places. But they absolutely deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood, thank you for everything you have given us in professional wrestling because it has been 
a joy to watch your matches, an absolute joy. And they are my number one. They are my number one. But that means it's time to hear from you guys. Who are your favourite wrestlers of the year? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll try and apply to every single one of you. Keep your eyes out for more pro wrestling content coming very soon, including some more list videos because we love lists. And I'll try and apply to every single comment down below. Thank you all ever so much for your support and have a nice day.